Hi, Kevin Henry with Dental Economics, here today at the SCN meeting, the Speaking Consulting Network meeting, and that's in Charleston, South Carolina, with my good friend Jenny Hegarty, and we're going to talk a little bit today about HR. And Jenny, I know HR is not really a dentist's favorite thing, but you say it's really because of some misunderstanding about what HR can truly be, right? I, I really do think it is, um, and mostly because in most dental practices, they're just not big enough to have an HR department to the doctor to be responsible for that, and um, that's not what doctors trained for. They're right. trained to be dentists, and all of a sudden they're managing people, and that can be difficult. Um, when I first started with practice management consulting 15 years ago, what I found was I was trying to implement systems, and we didn't have the right people in place. So the systems are really not what creates the success, it's the people that do. So if we can help the doctors recognize that it all begins with having the right person. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about HR in dentistry, we really can handle this, you know, and the doctors can handle this. It's everything from, you know, understanding the basic rules they have to follow in the laws to hiring the best people, and then leadership and communication, truly empowering people, and then when we get to the point where we try to put systems in place, they stick, and that's where the, the success comes in. You know, a lot of times I'll hear, how do I find those right people? What are, what are some tips that you can give to maybe the dentists who are watching to make sure that they've got the right people in place before those systems are in place? Well, first of all, I think um, it's very frustrating to be shorthanded. So oftentimes doctors will find themselves needing a team member and they just want to hire quickly. Right. And studies show most people hire within the, they make their hiring decision within the first 10 minutes of meeting someone. And then they find all the information they can to support that decision. And six weeks later after they've hired them, they don't even recognize them. You know, what happened to that person they thought they met? So there are ways that you can go through a hiring process where you have your applicants jump through some hoops and prove who they are. So you really get a much deeper sense of them and you make better choices the first time. So there's definitely ways we can help with that. Um, and for many of the doctors, they're a little nervous because they say, I've not had any training in any of right. this, right? Um, and that's where, you know, there are lots of things, uh, lots of people who can help you with that. But mostly I want the doctors to relax and realize it's their vision that they first have to get really clear about. And then they'll start to recognize the people that will match that vision. And so by trying to avoid the managing, because you brought that up, this yeah, is the doctor's absolutely. least favorite part, absolutely. right? So many of them will say, well, I... You know, I, I've hired good people and I'm just going to let them go on their own. And actually that doesn't work because if they don't know what you want, they can be working really hard with the wrong priorities. Because leadership obviously still plays a huge role in this. Yes, so for the, for the doctors to realize that even if they're trying to be hands-off, it's not that they have, they're not managing, they're really mismanaging. And I think that's an epidemic that we see in dentistry, the mismanagement. Um, and. Uh, it's not. Um, it's important to realize when doctors say, "I don't. I'm not sure how to do that." You really are already doing it. You're spending so much time putting out fires that never should have gotten started. True. Right. So if we can take that time that you're spending reactively and have you work proactively with it, there's some simple skills that can get you really effective. Last question for you: What's the biggest HR mistake that you see a lot of people make? I think the biggest mistake that they make is not just jumping in because there's so much that, that is needed. Their leadership is so needed. And I think if they will realize that they're not going to get what they expect, they're going to get what they accept. Okay, the very best team member is craving your feedback. They want your leadership. And it's the mediocre or the average team member who wants to fly under the radar. So you have a choice to make. Do you want to spend your time focusing on the high performer or the low performer, and all of your success will come from that decision. So if we can get doctors focused on realizing, I'm gonna step in, I'm gonna take an active role, if I need help, I'm going to get it, but I'm gonna to work towards creating the team that's gonna help my practice move forward, because then the systems will be sustainable. Okay. Give our viewers a way they can get a hold of you if they want more info. Uh, my website is uh, jennyhegarty.com. The vowels always confuse people. It's G-I-N-N-Y-H-E-G-A-R-T-Y.com. Great. Jane, thanks for the time. I appreciate it. My pleasure. It. Thank you.